One of the first things you can do to manage your analysis and SAS programs is to uh, manage the change control or the change management of your SAS programs. So for example, let's say you're working on an analysis where you open up a SAS program and uh, you may make some changes. So if I were to say add a new analysis here, and if I were to save that, now the way SAS does it is it saves your SAS programs on the file system without much change control. And what I mean by that is this file here gets updated and the old one gets lost. So I use this tool called SciValidate that lists all the programs for a particular study. And I can do several things. For example, I can just quickly capture a version of that code. It, in addition to the version of the program, it captures my username and the date time as to when it was captured. I can also optionally capture the same information with an additional um, comment note. This will describe uh, things like um, what this new update is about. So this is to add a, a new analysis. This is analogous to what you see at the header part of the SAS program. In fact, you have the option of inserting that same note into the header automatically. I'll just say no for now. And I can look at the history in that um, I just did a backup. So I can at, at any point view that version of the code and also see some of its metadata, which I'll talk about in a little bit, essentially information about the program. Now, in addition to managing all the changes, I can also view differences. So if I were to compare, say, this version and a version from yesterday and compare it, it shows me the previous version and how the comment was changed from this uh, text to the newer text that I typed in. So if your program was very long, of course, all the differences will be highlighted uh, with a little color indicating what has changed. The second part of configuration management is getting a handle of all the metadata associated with your SAS programs. Metadata is information about the SAS programs itself. If you were to look at the uh, viewing the history here, um, this all this information to the right here is considered metadata. Now the metadata consists of where the program is located and the name of the program, the date and in, in terms of when it was you know, captured and versioned and how it was versioned and, and then some related notes and, and who did it. Now later on when we do additional things like validation and we promote it from a development area to a production, those additional metadata will be added as well. The third step to configuration management is managing the validation and testing of your SAS programs. To start the validation process, you would first select the program that is complete and is ready for validation. So the original programmer um, indicates that it's done by selecting on the start validation. And what it does is it actually takes the original program, of course makes a version copy of that, and then um, renames it to a different extension so that the validation analysts would know that this is ready for validation. Now in addition to making a copy of the program, you can type in metadata or description about uh, the status of the program. For example, this is ready for validation. And it does a couple little things such as evaluating the log to see if there's any errors or warning messages and that could be documented. The validation analyst can now start testing this either by writing a duplicate program to coming up with the same summary results or code review or whatever the process uh, involves. Now in this validation process, the validation analyst can then uh, document what their findings are. 
they can go here and select on validation notes and they can indicate what validation um, tasks they're performing. This list, by the way, could be customized to fit the particular team's validation tasks. And then uh, they could set the status such as, okay, they just started the validation and they can enter additional notes to record that the fact that um, the validation has started. And so they would uh, also record findings during their process this way, but this gives a complete history. Now, once they're ready and everything uh, gets resolved, the deviations from the um, original programmer, they can then select on this past status. This means that the original program or the, the validation testing has all passed and everything works well. Um, so this is ready for production. This text is only optional and can be used be as a communication tool between the validation analyst and the uh, original author programmer. So the one thing that does change is that um, the file is renamed back to its original name and it can be used now in a production mode. If you were to look at the history of that, you'll see what has transpired um, primarily there are other things I've done before, but the newer items down here was that it was um, locked for validation, meaning that was when it was renamed. And then there were additional validation notes that was um, captured during the validation. And then it was set to production. Now, the production has a number, in this case, version 3.0. Essentially, the way it works is that each time uh, a new production is set, it takes the previous number and increments it. The user can define this in terms like, like 2.1, but when you set it to production, it gets the next integer number, in this case, 3.0. The true documentation should be uh, more detailed, and uh, there are several ways of doing this, and I'll show you an example. So if you go back to uh, looking at these programs, you can generate reports. So, for example, you can get the complete history of the program that we're looking at by selecting that. And by, by running that, it shows similar to that history view, but it's a little bit more detailed in a sense that it captures additional um, metadata. For example, the notes that we typed in uh, the, the tasks that we selected for the validation and the, um, the status of each step. It also records who the user was that did that work and the specific uh, date time point uh, of each task. This is another where you get a complete history of all the programs in your study folder. So besides that, the one that we were looking at, th this could be all the programs. You can also generate one where not only does it have the latest status, but you can get to the source code of each one as well. So this is a good snapshot of the, pro the latest program and its program code that you can send to, send to a collaborator. After the program has been validated and documented, is a good idea to move it from the development folder to a um, production area. This is sometimes referred to as dev to prod or development to production by using this utility. And you, you can start by selecting the folder where you have all your development program and then uh, promoting it to a different folder. Now the reason for this is the production folder is more restrictive in that the programs that are stored in the production folder are controlled with read-only access and is meant for production use. It has less uh, changes compared to the development folder that's constantly being updated. So for example, if you have fully tested these two example programs, you can promote them and move them from 
uh, the development to the production folders. In addition to just copying the programs, uh, they will also be set to read only in terms of permissions. You can also have the option of rerunning the, the selected programs in the production folder. Now, by running the program, you can confirm that everything works well, but you also need the related input data sets and files that it reads. This process will evaluate the log of these original programs and identify the related input data sets and input files and also copy them to the production location. This is in a relative location. So for example, if the program is in a subfolder from where the development is located, the same subfolder would then be created in the production folder and then those input data and files are copied over before it gets executed. Um, I'll go ahead and skip the running, but you also have the option of emailing to team members, uh, documenting the fact or communicating the fact that um, the production programs ha have been you know, created. Um, what was in the production folder now contains those newly promoted um, files. Now these files contain some history. So if you were to go back to the validation tool and uh, if you were to change the directory to the production folder, you'll see that these are now the production um, fold files that have been completed. Now you can look at the history of this. So in addition to migrating the files, the final production files over their related history, is, is also carried over in all the related metadata. So if I look at the history here, I can see that um, all the files or uh, this particular history has the validation effort that we did before. And the last step here is the fact that it was promoted from development to production. So it is a new version, although it's the same program that existed here in the development area. The nice thing about this process is that the entire historical um, change control is maintained. The version that's being used in production is the latest version and that's been fully validated. So that summarizes the five steps of configuration management that deals with SAS programs with the last step being the promotion of the development to uh, production